October. So the economy is tanked, unemployment's nearly 10%, and you're running for office in a tough district. What do you do? Blame China. Is Baron Hill running for Congress in Indiana or China? Baron Hill supported the $800 billion failed stimulus package that created renewable energy jobs in China. His big spending programs will force us to keep borrowing money from, you guessed it, China. So Hill's creating massive new debt here while he created renewable energy jobs over there. Baron Hill for Indiana or China. Well, some might call that ad strange. Heck, you may even say it's a little racist. But it's hardly out of the ordinary this political season. In fact, this week the New York Times reported that no less than 29 candidates from both sides of the aisle are trying to accuse their opponents of being in bed with China. So why the sudden upsurge in anti-China sentiment? And why would voters be so scared of China in the first place? I hit the street again to talk it out. When I say the word China, what do you think of? Anti-American. The job problem. Don't buy in China, you are saying made. I think Kung Fu movies. Their politics is still horrible. Crowded. Fantastic people. Yeah. I like Chinese people, I like Chinese food, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Millions of jobs have gone from America to China. I think it's the first step towards a one world government. You hear all of the uh, people are running for office complaining about we got to get jobs, we got to get jobs, we got to get jobs, we got to yeah. get jobs. The president not doing jobs. It's not the president, it's outsourcing. I'm very concerned about that, and I think the technology is here. We just don't use it. Everybody's looking to save a little bit of money. I don't blame uh, anyone but, uh, but progress. I think it's just uh, the ebb and flow of the way business is. We created our own monster. We kept buying cheap. We don't care who it's from. I buy what pleases me. I don't really look where it comes from. And you're, 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 you're dressed, you're sharp. Do you make a conscious effort? to consume made in America stuff? How can you when 99% of all things are made in foreign countries? Clothing made yeah. in, America. in America. Your car? My car is not. I have a Honda CRV. Look at that, a union a young guy with a Honda CRV, one out of four. Union made in America. Uh, what happens is uh, our workmanship is deteriorating. Outsourcing all the rest of it, I, I really couldn't even give you any information about. I just like to pay my bills. Well, joining me now to talk about it, Jesse Ventura, former Minnesota governor and host of True TV's Conspiracy Theory, and Peter Sagal, host of NPR's Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. You got to admit, guys, on paper, China's pretty scary. We owe them over $800 billion. They've surpassed us as the world's worst polluter. And according to the Alliance for American Manufacturing, a nonpartisan independent group, we lost 2.4 million jobs to China between 2001 and 2008. Still, is something more sinister going on here in these advertisements, shades of xenophobia, maybe? Uh, uh, former Governor Jess Ventura, you went to China when you were the governor, right? Are you afraid of communist China? No, not at all. I found China to be very interesting. I found the people over there remarkable. And, you know, I think the problem here, Pete, is this, when you talk about a superpower. The worst thing, in my opinion, a superpower can do is get involved in a bunch of wars around the world. History's proved that's what will bring a power down. You don't see China involved in all this stuff. They're taking care of their people. They're taking care of their economy. They're doing everything they should be doing. While we here in the United States are being the world's policemen, we're involved in a war in Iraq, we're involved in a war in Afghanistan. I'm sure Iran may be on the barometer soon enough. But uh, to me, the worst thing you can do as a superpower is get yourself involved in wars throughout the world. It'll bring you down, and it's well, bringing us down right now. Peter Sagal, uh, are, are you afraid of, of communist China? Are they a threat? Are these uh, ads just trying to scare people? Well, I don't think, I mean, I think you heard Governor Ventura admit actually what's going on here, which is not so much fear and hatred, but sort of a sense of inferiority. It's like America is this scrappy, small high school in Hoosiers. <laughs> And China is the big powerhouse, except in the end of our movie, they keep beating us. And but I think that's what you're hearing. It's like they're so much nicer, and they built that really cool bird's nest stadium, and we don't have anything like that. And their back scratchers are really great and better <laughs> than our back scratchers, which is why we keep buying them. I think, I think basically, I think if you were to scratch those politicians and poke them a little, they'd start weeping and wishing they were Chinese. All right, guys, let, let's switch gears and talk about our political plague of the week. This week, it's ADD, or Asinine Debate Disorder. Want an example? How about the debate you saw right here on CNN between Delaware Senate candidates Christine O'Donnell, you know, the one who's not a witch, and Chris Coons, you know, the one who's not a bearded Marxist. I don't know about you guys, but I, I felt like this was just like watching an hour-long attack ad. At some points uh, about issues people don't even really care about. Let's take a quick listen. They jokingly called me 
a bearded Marxist. If you take five minutes and read the article, it's clear on the face of it, it was a joke. Despite that, my opponent and lots of folks in the right-wing media have endlessly spun this. I am not now, nor have I ever been, anything but a clean-shaven capitalist. Well, I, w I, would, I would stand to um, disagree because, first of all, if you're saying what I said on a comedy show is relevant to this election, then absolutely, you writing an article, forget the beardist Marxist comment, you writing an article saying that you learned your beliefs from an articulate, intelligent Marxist professor, and that's what made you become a Democrat, right. that should send chills up the spine of every Delaware voter, because then if you compare that statement to accurate, your policies... If it, would, if it were true, I'd agree. Jesse Ventura, you did a lot of things before you were a governor, you're an independent. Does it matter what people did in high school or early college years? Because if it did, how hard of a time well, to do that? I don't think so, because, you know, we all change. You know, if we're running for office and we're 22 years old, 25 years old, then yes, it does matter. But, uh, you know, I ran for office when I was nearly 50 years old, and I think all of us do things when we're young that maybe we regret at times or we look back and say, gee, that was sure stupid of me. But that's all part of the growing process of maturing and all that. So I don't really believe you can hold somebody responsible for what they did way back when they went to college and things of that order. Uh, Peter Sagal, do these uh, debates add anything? I mean, were there, are there real important issues and answers and solutions being discussed, sir? Well, they were, both in that one and in the debate in Nevada, but of course nobody paid any attention to them. They paid attention to how well each candidate performed. You know, did they s give out their talking points with a credible degree of enthusiasm? And that's to me, is weird. We're, we're judging these fairly important political debates or, or contests with the same standards we apply to American Idol. How well did they do? How well did they <laughs> hold the stage? And if we're going to do that, I say, let's just go to Delaware and make Crystal Bowersock senator, because she deserves something. And, and you're an independent, Jesse Ventura. These two parties, they dominate the whole political system. Should be, there be a third voice at these debates? Well, I don't support a third party anymore, Pete. Uh, I believe that the Republicans and Democrats have so corrupted our system that if a third party does rise up in order to compete, it likewise will have to be corrupt. I stand now in a new position. I'm for the abolishment of political parties. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and especially John Adams would agree with me. John Adams stated that the fall of America wouldn't come from an outside source, it would come from within, and he said precisely what it would be when political parties take over our government. Pete, I think we're already there. Jesse Ventura, always honest. Peter Sagal from NPR, why don't you moderate one of these debates? Come on. I, you know, I'm waiting for the phone call. I, I, I'd be happy to. I'll say this about Governor Ventura, though. He'll I mean, never he get it. For Governor of no. When you ran for governor of Minnesota, though, sir, actually it was the debates that propelled you because you came across as so much yep. more of an interesting person than your two opponents at that time. And I think you tapped in to the deep-seated, hidden Minnesotan urge to finally, finally be interesting. And that's how you got into office. Oh, so I don't think you should uh, score in debates. Oh, Oh, right. no, 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 absolutely. Debates won my election because I was polling 10% when the debates start and I finished in a three-way race well, that's and because won with 37%. That's because you're so honest. Guys, thanks for coming on. Of course, watch Jesse Ventura on his new season thanks, of Conspiracy Pete. Theory on True TV and Peter Sagal, NPR's Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. Great to have both of you guys. Men in a hole for more than two months and one may have thought twice about coming back up. That's next.